Alright, in this video, I'll be responding to Stanley Chappell's rant about the state of YouTube cubing. So for those who didn't watch that yet, I would recommend watching a bit of it. It is quite long, so maybe not watch the whole thing, but I think some parts of the video are quite insightful. So I do want to mention one thing before starting this video, and that is I don't want any hate directed towards any people I'm mentioning in this video, and also keep any discussions in the comments civil. I also want to mention that if I do misrepresent Stanley's views in any ways, I do apologize. But in this video, I'll just be responding to what I got out of that video. Alright, so the first part I do want to talk about is about entertainment videos in cubing. So I think a lot of that was directed towards Cubing Encoded, who is a more entertainment based YouTuber, for those who don't know. So some of the criticism they had towards his channel was that his content was lazy, and it really wasn't beneficial to the cubing community. So first off, I do want to talk about his first point, which is about his content being lazy. So is it true that his content is quite easy to make? Yes. And is that really a bad thing? No. So he posts videos pretty much every single day for a long time now, and honestly it is quite impressive for those who haven't done YouTube before. And to be posting one video every single day, it is quite hard to make every single one of those videos high quality, so he does have some lower quality videos in between. So is that really a bad thing? I would say no. Recently, I've been posting pretty lazy content as well. So even I've made content like that recently. In the past few weeks, I have been posting almost daily, and I posted a lot of news videos where I didn't put too much effort into it, but it just took a few minutes of recording and showing a bit of images on screen. And the reason why I think there's nothing wrong with that is because at the end of the day, it's posting more content, which is more for the viewers. Being a more successful YouTuber requires getting more views and growing your channel, and posting a lot of videos daily does definitely accomplish that. He also mentioned how a lot of Jaden McNeil's videos are super good, but I would also like to point out that some of his videos were also quite easy to make and really short and not edited. But a lot of Jaden McNeil's videos are super helpful and informative, even without all the fancy edits, which shows that it really doesn't matter how long or how much effort you take into making your videos. At the end of the day, Kumi and Cody videos, while some of them might be a bit lazy, are entertaining and that shows by the views. With less effort, does his video quality suffer? Yes, and I think that's a fact that even he would agree with. If you compare the videos that he made recently with videos he has made a long time ago that were more thought out, there is definitely a huge difference. Making reaction videos are going to take obviously less work and less creativity than actually creating original content. However, he is committed to doing this daily video thing and it has been working out pretty well for him. I don't think it's really a problem with his videos, but rather maybe the YouTube algorithm. It does sometimes prefer quantity over quality and I think YouTubers like him are just playing to the algorithm. I have to admit, a lot of my videos that I spent a lot of time on sometimes get only 100 views, while some videos I make that are done in a few minutes get thousands of views. So it's just how the YouTube algorithm works. So yeah, posing his content is a decision that he has made. While it is fair to critique his content, I still think it is valid content and I do definitely respect the fact that he got so far off YouTube. But for those who don't know, someone of his size would make quite a bit of money from those videos, especially if they're posted daily. So yeah, he's making quite a bit of money. I think he mentioned that he's helping out his family with it. And I think he also said he's giving some money to charity, which is also super cool. To summarize, even though some of his videos don't show too much effort, he is still posting daily and he is super successful. So I don't think there's anything wrong with that. As for his content not really providing anything for the community, I think that is wrong as well. While his content doesn't provide too much to the speed game community, that's not really his video style. His videos might not be super informative, but they are quite entertaining. So Stanley is a speedcuber, so he might not see Kumi and Coded's videos being helpful for him, but I think there's definitely a part of the Kumi community where Kumi and Coded's videos are helpful in. I think this can be seen outside Kumi as well, so I'll put some videos on the screen right now. These are all quite dumb and useless videos, but they are still entertaining, so they're still valid content. A point I do agree with, especially with entertainment channels, is that people with larger influences should definitely be aware of that. Because they have so many people watching their channel, people like Cubing Encoded should probably be more responsible with what they say. And I think that's especially true with a younger and more impressionable audience. I think the specific scenario they're talking about was about clock. But I guess in all topics, people like Cubing Encoded should definitely be more careful. And I guess me as well. One thing though is that Cubing Encoded did own up to this fact. And I think that shows a lot of maturity about him. I do definitely think he has no bad intentions. He is trying to make entertaining videos. And sometimes it is quite easy to lose sight of the influence that they do have. Another thing he mentioned in his video was about Jperm and about how some of his content was about tutorials about events he wasn't really too familiar with. Aniko is mostly blind in FMC, even though Jperm does do these events a little bit, he isn't like really a master at either of them. So I think some of the problems that Stanley had with these videos were that Jperm really simplified these events way too much. And I think another point was that Jperm had some misinformation in his videos as well because he wasn't really too familiar with the topic. For the first point, I think that oversimplifying a topic is definitely not a bad thing. A lot of JPerm's audience is definitely going to be new cubers and a lot of people that want to get into new events but don't know really how to. And I think JPerm's videos accomplish this really really well. He's a really great teacher and he does make things very simple. 
While his videos are pretty straightforward and don't allow for too much creativity, they give the foundations to a beginner about an event where they could build off of later. So even in my videos, I do something pretty similar. Like if you watch my scroll on tutorial, it's really, really simplified. And there are a lot of things in there that a lot of good solvers might really dislike. For example, I taught CP parity, not EP parity, which some people might think is pretty dumb. However, the reason for me teaching that was because I thought it would be the easiest for people to understand the event. I think EP parity made a lot of people hate Square One really because it was a really long algorithm that they did not want to learn. So I had the alternative to make an easier algorithm for them to learn. Yes, it's simplified and maybe it is a bad habit, but it does get people into the event and actually get interested in it. The other point was misinformation. I think one of the points that they brought up was that in Jim's video, he mentioned that floating algs are only used when the buffer is solved, when that's actually not true. I'm not sure if I'm quoting that directly, but I think that was the gist of it. And my response for that is that even though it is wrong and he should have probably checked it a bit more, it really isn't that damaging to learn that and maybe realize that's actually not true later. So you guys mostly know me for my scroll on content, but I have been trying to expand to more events. And recently I made two videos, one on judging and one on pyramids. So as you guys know, doing tutorials takes quite a bit of research and a lot of learning. But even with that, there is bound to be maybe some errors here and there. So in my judging tutorial, I think I made a mistake with E1s. And actually a delegate, Kit Clement, commented on my video showing that it was completely wrong and I really messed up in the video. And for pyramids, one of the tips in my video was actually quite bad. And also my L phrase tutorial didn't have the best outs. And I know a lot of pro pyramidsers said that my videos were okay but they weren't really correct for the advanced solutions. And after I learned that those videos had some errors, I instantly tried to correct them as much as possible. So I do agree with the criticism that people like me and Jperm, people who make tutorials, should be more responsible. But I would like to defend ourselves and say that people who make tutorials are trying their absolute best in making their videos as informative as possible. There are going to be some minor mistakes here and there, which is unfortunate, but they are bound to happen. And even with the mistakes here and there, and the oversimplification, the tutorials are still informative and are going to help more cubers get into that event. And the point I do want to really put out there is that good tutorials on a lot of events really didn't exist for a long time. So I know for Debit3, there weren't too many great tutorials on that event until really Jperm came along. And I can say the same for Square One, there weren't really too many resources until I guess I made a lot of videos on them. And that was something that Stanley did mention in this video, which is pretty cool. And right now I still think there's a lot of gaps where tutorials have to be made. And that's the reason why I try to make as many tutorials as possible. And I know that's the same from Jperm or some other tutorial channels. So I think videos like these are nothing but good for the community. Yes, even though the content in there isn't perfect, there's not really tutorials out there, so it's the next best thing. A lot of world class solvers choose not to really make their own videos about these events, which is perfectly okay, but because they don't, there aren't too many resources on getting to their speed. So there obviously is going to be people like Jperm who makes the content about that event. Even though they're not a master at the event, it is definitely better than having no content on the event at all. And this leads to a point that I have been advocating for for a long time now. And that is world class solvers or faster solvers should definitely be putting out more content about their event. I think by having faster solvers make tutorials about their event, it makes it really less likely that they're going to make mistakes and it's going to be more informative for newer cubers. That's the main reason I've been doing scroll tutorials. I think it's quite useful for newer solvers to have a list of tutorials that they can trust and always use. And I've been trying to do that for Square One as much as possible, but I know a lot of other events really haven't had too much content on them. So I would really recommend faster solvers to start taking into consideration making their own content. I think it would be great for the community. I think if world class cubers can even team up with people who make tutorials, that would also be a great way for more tutorials to be seen out there while still being factually correct. So in conclusion, while people like Jperm don't really 100% master the events that they do teach, I think their videos are still overall better for the community. They're getting more people interested in these events, and even though there might be minor mistakes here and there, they can be corrected in the future. As a person who does also make videos and tutorial videos, I know it is quite difficult sometimes to make these kind of videos, and to really teach these events in a way that makes it easiest for the viewer. So I do really have to respect the work that Jperm and some other YouTubers have done. Yes, there are flaws here and there, but overall those videos are positive for the community. And I know I disagree quite a bit from Stanley Chapel's video, but there is one thing I definitely do agree on, and that is Cubing World should come back. So for those who don't know, Cubing World was a channel created a long time ago. It was pretty much a collaborative channel between a lot of cubers, where they all posted videos on different events, different topics, etc. And I think something like that today would be so great. In this video, I already mentioned about how I think there's a lot of gaps in tutorials that need to be filled in Cubing, and I think this channel would be a perfect solution to that. As for when this would happen, stuff is currently in the works, so we'll see. So yeah, that's about it for this response video. Thanks for watching and see you guys in the next one.